wondering which eye is your dominant eye, how to test for it, and ways in which you would use it, I'm gonna tell you, stick around. Welcome to the Eye Care and Wellness Channel. I'm Joel Hayden. We talk about all things eye care, nutrition, eye nutrition, and ways in which to live a longer and better life. So if that interests you, consider subscribing, hit that like button if you like what I have to say. Let's get at it. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you a way in which I particularly like to test my patients for eye dominance. It's pretty simple. It works well on people over 30, 35 years old. I'll explain why later. In the meantime, eye dominance. Is it real and is it important? Well, it is real. Almost all of us have a dominant eye. People who have limited sight in one eye, if they've always had it, will probably, will almost invariably have the dominant eye be the good eye. Same with people who are born with a lazy eye. But for the rest of us with two good healthy eyes, which eye is our dominant eye and why is it important? So first let me tell you why it's important. As our visual system has evolved from childhood to adult, the neurons tend to grow a little bit more along the visual pathway in the dominant eye more than the non-dominant eye in the visual cortex because it's the eye that we really send the majority, at least, yeah, the majority of the information back to the brain with. Many times we will find people with their dominant eye correctable to better than 2020, where their non-dominant eye is 2020, maybe even a little bit less. So I've always have, I always have that in mind when I'm testing my patient's vision. So where is it relevant? Sports, baseball players, it turns out, that people who are cross dominant have the best batting averages. And they did a study with little leaguers years ago. A right handed batter whose left eye dominant is going to have their left eye closer to the pitcher when they're batting. And that in turn will give them better information on ball speed, ball rotation, ball movement than if they were a right eye, right-handed batter. So it turns out that there was a study probably 20 years ago of little leaguers and they found the best hitters to be cross dominant, either left eye, right-handed or right eye, left-handed. It's also relevant in someone with archery. Someone with archery, um, right-handed is gonna wanna pull the bow back and have that right eye right there. And that's easy when they have the same side dominant. It is tricky, opposite. With left eye dominant right-handed, would either have to go across more to get their head over there. It can be really tricky. So there are some times that it's really tough. Uh, people who shoot. Um, pistols, much easier. But as far as a long gun, uh, it can be tough to get your, your opposite eye over. It can also be tough. A shooting pool is another great eye. Uh, billiards pool, where you have the pool stick and you want to look down the pool stick and you have cross dominance. You're going to have to get your head over more and it puts you in an awkward position. So many people who are left eye dominant, right handed, will shoot pool left handed so that their eye matches up much better. So there's a lot of places that it comes into play. Photography is another one, very important for any photographer to know which eye is their dominant eye. Okay, so now on to how we test for it. There's a number of different ways we can test for it. This is the way I use with my patients when I really think it's important to know which eye is their dominant eye. And for me, it usually comes into play when we're talking about bifocal contacts. Someone who's over 45, 50 years old, um, we, many times we would do something called monovision years ago where we fit one eye for distance and one eye for reading. Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, both wore monovision contacts. You never saw them with reading glasses at the podium. In, in monovision lenses, you want the distance eye to be the dominant eye. So that's why it's important. So what I tell my patients to do is make a small hole. They take their hands, overlap them, and a small hole. And pick a target across the room 
and look right at it through the hole. Right now, you don't know this, but I do, that when I get in that position, there is only one eye looking through that hole at the target. And that's what we're doing. We're blocking out the other eye. So if you close one eye, you will see that either the target still lines up and that's a dominant eye, or the target doesn't line up and that's a non-dominant eye. Some people will also use a playing card and put a small hole in it, and I mean a small hole, and do that. And that works well too. I find that just to be a little bit more work. And then lastly, there's called the thumb test. Take a distant object, put your thumb on it, and the, when you close one eye, the thumb will either stay on the object, dominant eye, or move away from the object, non-dominant eye. So for me, my right eye is my dominant eye. So I told you at the beginning that there was gonna be a way in which I told you that I, I use with my patients. And in my exam rooms, in both of them, I have one of these. And that's called a disposable camera to you youngins that may not have ever seen one. It was a camera that had the film in it automatically. You took pictures, you sent it out, and the pictures came back eventually on paper. And since so many of us have used them in our lifetime, especially so many of us who are over 45, 50 years old, and I need to know which eyes are dominant eye, I hand them the disposable camera in my chair and say, which eye would you hold it up to? And boom, they go right to the eye. I, and then I'll tell them, go to the other eye. And they go to the other eye and they're trying to find the hole with the eye. It's really awkward. It's because they've never done that before. So dominant eye test is really good to know which eye is your dominant eye. And for a variable number of reasons, I find for over 45 years old, 40 years old, the disposable camera trick works great and it really does um many times they just end it right there if i have any questions then i'll fall back to the hole in the hand but it, again it needs to be small enough and that target needs to be far enough away i hope this helped i hope you found it interesting if you did consider subscribing hit that like button and until next time take care